Amen. Well, today we want to talk about the faith and love connection. The faith and love connection. How many know that they're connected? How do I know that they're connected? Well, the Word says they're connected. Remember, when, I, when I'm up here preaching, I don't give my personal opinion on life. I, I tell you what the Word says. And I want to tell you another thing. These messages are meant to be heard by you, to be taken into your spirit, and for you to go out there and apply it to your lives. This isn't just a Bible study where you just hear a few good words and say, well, wasn't that a nice little message? No, it's, it's to mean something to you. It's, it's to influence you. It's to encourage you. It's to develop you in your faith and, and open up your eyes to the vastness of what God has for all of us and go on out there and do what the Word says. And then you come on back in the next, next uh, Wednesday or Sunday and get fueled up again. Get charged up and go out there again. Consistency is the key to growing spiritually. Got to be consistent. Amen? Consistently be where God has asked us to be. And consistently do what God has asked us to do. Consistency is the key to growing spiritually. Amen? Look at, look at Galatians 5, 6. And we're going to read our first scripture. Galatians 5, 6, and we're going to talk this morning about the faith and, and, and love connection and, and uh, give him all the, all the credit because he's given us a word that can change lives. God's word is powerful, isn't it? You know how we know that God's word is powerful? Well, look at all the persecution against the word of God. Look at all the persecution. I mean, the Bible says that Satan who is the God of this world, with the little g. He's not the creator of the world, but he's the ruler of this age. But he doesn't rule us, because we're born again believers. But he's out there doing all that stuff. All that killing, stealing, and destroying. He's out there, and, and he has a plan. His plan is to hide the word from those who do not believe lest the light of the gospel would enter into them and they would see it and, and come, to, come to a place of, uh, of, of faith and, and walk out of the darkness and into the light by the power of God. They can't do it without the word. Think about your worst, lowest times of your life. There probably wasn't much word in there, was there? Probably wasn't much word around you. What made you come out of it? Getting the word believing the word, hearing the word, and then it kept illuminating you and kept giving you faith and hope and, and, and power. And finally, one day you had enough and you said, that's it. I'm going to live this way for God and I'm not turning back. And as you did, the, the, all the chains that bound you were broken. That's how God does it. People look for things to happen overnight. They don't happen overnight a lot of times. Your born again experience happens instantly. But then you got to work your way, step your way up out of things. And you do that by renewing your mind to the Word, getting the Word into your spirit, and, and being consistent about it. And then all the power is in the Word and in the fellowship, and it will do its job. Look at Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. I'll just put it in a short term. What it's saying is the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. That's the only thing that counts. A faith that is motivated, expressed, or energized by love. What kind of love? Human love? No, God's love. How many of you are born-again believers? I mean, I'm proud of it. A born-again believer, I am. And I know that when I accepted Jesus Christ, I became a new creation in Christ Jesus. And God put his Holy Spirit in me, and he put his love in me. He, put, he puts his word in me, because the Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. And so, faith and love are connected. This verse connects it, doesn't it? Faith working through love, it connects it. 
And then so we can say it this way, faith working, your faith working is dependent on your love walk. And you need to be in faith because the Bible says it is impossible without faith to please God. It's impossible to please God without faith. Impossible. God wants you to walk in faith. Why? That's how you get the victory. That's how you control and, 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 and overcome the enemy that's trying to bind you and steal, kill, and destroy. You do it by faith. And where does that faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It develops and it grows and gets stronger and stronger. And, and as you continue to put the word inside of you, we have to be diligent on that, right? We could say it this way. If, if faith is the shiny new car, then love is the gas that makes it go. What's the sense of having a shiny new car if you can't go anywhere because you don't have any gas? You can be sitting in the driveway and you can be waving at everybody, look at my nice car. But they're driving down the road and you're sitting there. You know why? You have no gas. So faith is like the, the shiny new car. It's beautiful. It's powerful. But you've got to have something to make it go. And that's the love. I also like to use this analogy. I've said it before, but, but uh, uh, faith and, and love go together like chocolate and peanut butter and a Reese's peanut butter cup. You need them both. I know, that made myself hungry. <laughs> right? If you have a Reese's peanut butter cup, it's got two ingredients. It's got peanut butter and chocolate. Faith and love go together. So I use these analogies so maybe it'll stick in your head. And then when you're out there not acting very loving, you have to remind yourself, oh, wait a minute, faith works by love. And if I continue to tell this person off, that means my faith's not going to work. You know, do you ever notice that some people are very top-heavy in their faith, but very low in their love? Some people, they, they know every scripture for every situation. They are Bible scholars to the T but they haven't learned how to walk in love. And so they're, they're basically stuck in the driveway, right? Some people are top heavy on the love, really, really, really good, loving, kind, forgiving people, but they're low on the faith. They don't have a lot of understanding. We need to be up on both of them. We need to be high, high, uh, top heavy on both. If you are, you're gonna move mountains. What's a mountain? Well, whatever's in your way. Whatever the devil's trying to put in your way. If it's stealing, killing, and destroying in your life, I guarantee you one thing. It did not come from God to teach you a lesson. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And then in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he tells you how to have this faith. He says, speak to the mountain, and the mountain will move. Amen? We are to live a life of faith, but we are to love like Jesus loved us. Look at 1 Corinthians 13, 2, and this is another passage of Scripture that connects faith and, and love. Remember the Bible says, let everything be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So if I'm going to establish this point here this morning, that faith and love are connected and you need both, then I need to show you more than one scripture. If not, I'm trying to make a truth the whole truth. Well, if I can show you another scripture, and, and in fact, uh, there's many other scriptures I can show you, but, but I want to move on to something else. So I'm just trying to build a case with you. Can we let the word be the final authority? Amen. Can we let the word be the final authority? And, and, and you remember that that. Um, that faith and love are connected and you need, you need both of them, you'll be good to go. Look at 1 Corinthians 13, 2. He says, if I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but did not love others, I would be nothing. Look at that. He just described a lot of people right there. They got all the gifts in the world. 
They got all the understanding that passes all knowledge. They got these gifts. They got the experience. They got the backgrounds. They got the resume. But where is your love? Sometimes we have ministers come and they, they want to minister in here. Well, I'll check them out. And, and, I mean, they, they want to, uh, I mean, we bring guest ministers in that we trust, but some people, you know, they want to be a part of the church, but they want to minister too. And I say, well, why don't you go on out there just love on the people for a while? So, so I'll know if, if, you, or if you are going to profit us anything. Because that's what it means. It's no profit spiritually. It's profit to them if they get patted on the shoulder. And somebody says, boy, you're a powerful man of God. You are so powerful. But if they don't have love, they don't have anything. And a lot of times people aren't willing to do that. They don't want to come in here and love you. But I do. I love you. I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. Amen? And so, and there are other people. Brian Wills, we bring in. We bring in. Brian Wills loves you. Amen? That's why he gets to preach here. <laughs> why? Because he could have all the gifts in the world, but if he doesn't love you, then, then it's not going to matter. But he does love you. And other people we've had in before have loved you too. I don't know why they don't want us to come, some of them don't want to come in here and love on you, because you're very lovable. But sometimes the flesh gets in the way. Sometimes people condition and train themselves that, well, when I hear a preacher say, look, I got a message that you need to hear and everybody needs to hear and I'm sent by God, everybody needs to hear my message, I try to get out of that conversation as fast as I can. I mean, that, that uh, we got Jesus. He's the only one we need. We got each other, don't we? But if I have someone come in here and say, I, I, love, I love your people, I love you guys, I believe that there's an anointing in my life. If there's an anointing in, our, in their life, we'll recognize it too, right? But I want to be a benefit. I don't want to, I don't want to like destroy your chemistry or, or tear you down to build you up. I just want to add to what God's already doing. Good chance they, they, they'll get to talk. And so faith is trusting God's word. I'm going to tell you the difference now between faith and love. Faith is trusting God's word. Doesn't the Bible say we walk by faith, not by sight? If you're going to, if you're going to get your prayers answered, you've got to believe it before you see it. Amen. If you've got to see it first, that's not faith. You believe it because you're seeing the circumstance with the eyes of faith, your spiritual eyes. And you're saying, I know what it looks like. I know what it seems like. I know what it feels like. But God's word says differently. That's what you go by. You stand on the word. And you confess the word, not complain about the problem. That's, that's what faith is, is trusting the word. But you know that love is obedience to God's word. Love, God's love, is being obedient to God's word. Don't turn there for time's sake, but... Uh, um, in John 13, 34, Jesus said this, a new commandment I give to you. Commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. Come on now. Jesus has given us a commandment. He said, I want you to love your brother and sister like I loved you. What did he do for us with that love? Went the whole way to the cross. Gave it all up. See, these are, these are, this is the word of faith and the word of, 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 of the spirit of life and love that's supposed to saturate our mind and our heart so we know the right way to walk and the right things to say. And, and sometimes the best thing you can do is don't say anything at all if it's not beneficial to anyone. A lot of Christians, they, they speak too much. They talk too much. And we, we got to be, the Bible says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and then slow to get angry, right? And then Jesus said this, don't turn there, but in John 14, 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's not rocket science, right? <laughs> if you truly love Jesus Christ, you will keep his commandments because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What's his commandment? 
First of all, you got to love God with all your heart, amen, and love each other. Jesus said in, at another place, he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Good question, right? So our love for others is born out of our love for Jesus. That's the first foundation piece that we have. And then we have a respect and a reverence for the word, and we let these words find the home deep in our heart. And then we find out what God's love is like, and then we, we love on purpose. The God kind of love is not based on a feeling or an emotion. It's obedience. Amen? Jesus said, never repay evil for evil. And so when someone does you wrong and you want to just tell them about themselves and you want to act in an unbecoming way, then um, prayerfully that word is already in your mind and in your heart. That word will come up into your, the forefront, and, and, and you'll say, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to love Jesus. And in loving Jesus, I'm going to love that person. That's how we're supposed to do it. You can't love some people with your own love. It just will never happen. You're not supposed to love them with your love. You're supposed to love them with God's love that's in you. And we condition ourselves. And uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, I'm going to give you a list of what love is like. It, you can later, if you want something to read, read 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. And I'm just going to read it to you. I'm not going to read verse for verse, but I'm going to read to you what's in there. And also, if you have trouble with your love walk, meditate on this scripture. Day and night, meditate on it. Until you, until you get out of that, whatever you're in, and start treating people how God said to be treated. It says, love is patient and love is kind. Love is not jealous, boastful, proud, rude. Here's my particular favorite. Love does not demand its own way. Why does that one always pop in my mind when I'm trying to argue with my wife? <laughs> but that's another, I digress, that's another story. Love is not irritable. Now, if you've been irritable today, I know nothing. Blame it on the Holy Spirit. I'm not. You have to look at these messages. The Bible says only a fool despises wisdom and correction. Amen. But I'm not personally aiming this at anybody. But if the Holy Spirit is hitting you or stepping on your toes or whatever people say, then good for you. You need it. I don't know how many times I've needed it. And I've been thankful. I've been thankful because if you go down the wrong, unloving road too long, you're going to get resentful. And if you get resentful, one day you're just going to explode like a volcano. And your wrath will fill the house. You know that saying, if mama isn't happy, nobody's happy? Don't let that be said about you. You don't want to be the home wrecker. You don't want to tear down your own house because you're not happy. I don't like that saying. Mama needs to get it together <laughs> if she's the problem. The Bible says that, that, a, that a woman can tear down her own house. A house that God's built. Amen? Yes. Or a house that they built on the word of God and being obedient. And so love is not irritable. Here's another good one. Love keeps no record of wrong, of being wronged. Uh-oh. Are you out there saying, you know, I forgive that person, but I forgive them, but in 1972, they did me wrong. And then you go ahead and tell everybody what they did. Just curse them with your words. You know what that means? You've been resentful since 1972. That's probably why you don't get your prayers answered. I'm just saying. No, no one in here. I'm just saying people in general, right? So love never gives up. If you feel like giving up, it's not love. Love doesn't give up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. 
Love endures through every circumstance. That's quite a list, isn't it? You know, and I, I already touched on this a little bit, but sometimes we can love people, show love for people by what we don't say as much as what we do say. In other words, some people, I'm talking to Christians today. I'm not talking to the world. They're, they're out in their own avenue. I'm talking to the born-again believers. Sometimes people are quick to point other people's faults out. And you just let them make a mistake. You let them slip up. Or you let them do something stupid. And they're the first people to tell everybody about it. Tell everybody about what this person has done. We're not to be that person. We're not to be that. I, I say it this way. Stay out of the head-shaking circles. You know what a head-shaking circle is? A bunch of bobbleheads? Somebody, a group of people, and they're talking about one person, their failures, their faults, their and all this stuff, and everybody's shaking their head like. I should say, stay out of the bobblehead circle instead of the head shaking circle, because a lot of times they go up and down like, that's right, that's right, they're low down, no good, that's right. Well, how are you going to ever walk in faith if you're in the bobblehead circle? Brother Hagen, the father of the modern faith movement, uh, years ago, he was at a, a, a meeting for pastors, a big convention, and there was some pastor that did something wrong and made some mistakes, and must have been pretty bad because everybody, all the pastors were talking about it. Pastors got to do it too, right? It's even, it's double worse if a pastor does it. Because pastors are supposed to, you're supposed to be able to trust in them. When I, when I come up here and preach, I want you to know that I'm for you, not against you. Amen. And I'll, I'll stand for your honor and your integrity and, and respect you in, in every way. And uh, they asked Brother Hagin what he said about it. Now, Brother Hagin had this, this, this um, thing that he never said a bad word about anybody. That's probably why his faith works so good. And they asked him what he, sa- what he thought about this person. And, and he said, uh, well, you think a fellow would know better? That's all he said. That night in his hotel room, the, the Lord visited him. And the Lord was not happy with him that he said that. And he said, that's all I said. And the Lord said, who are you to judge another man's servant? And he said this, he said, how do you know you would have done better if you were in his situation? That's how the Lord thinks. We're to be building people up. The Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. I don't want to be his mouthpiece. The Bible says that there are people that Satan can take captive at his will to get them to say whatever they, he needs them to say at any different point because they have no discipline, no, no structure. No, no, they're out there speaking the faith words, but nothing's happening. But they'll keep on talking and keep on hurting people. Especially, you know, the Bible says be especially good to those of the household of faith in your own household of faith, especially good. Amen? And so sometimes we can, we can say the wrong things. Look at uh, Galatians chapter 9, verse 21, and um, another way to say it is this. How many know that love covers with silence? Love covers with silence. That's Genesis, Genesis 9, 21. Now, I I want you to to remember, this isn't a condemnation message. This is a message of hope. This is a message to inspire you. I know of no one certain, of one individual that this is directed at. This is directed at, at, at the whole church. Why? Let's go ahead and get better. Let's go ahead and improve. Let's go ahead and, and, and work on our love walk. If you feel that this is directed by me, this is what the Holy Spirit is telling me to, to, to tell you. If you feel this is personally directed by me to you, you're going to water it down and you're, it's going to be ruined. Amen? Don't, don't allow that thought to get in there. This is from the Holy Spirit, isn't it? And love covers with silence. And besides, every time I preach, I'm just preaching to myself. Who can't use a little bit of improvement in their love walk? Come on. If you raise your hand, I'm going to pray for you for lying. Right there, you need to work on that. (laughs) 
Some people, they're just so prim and proper and holy and righteous. And they've done everything right. I don't drink anymore. I don't smoke anymore. I don't pick up that wacky weed anymore. <laughs> I don't fight anymore. I go to church three times a week. But yeah, your mouth still needs some work. Because you're the first one that will, will, will jump on someone when they're down. I ask you, which is worse? I say the one that can't control his tongue is worse. Because those people that are struggling with things, they're, they're hurting themselves. When you start talking about other people, you're hurting them. And you're hurting yourself in the process. Amen? And that's not what we're supposed to do. But right after the flood, Noah, this great man of God who believed God, got on a boat, built a boat, did a great thing, an ark, and escaped the flood. He gets off of the ark, and this great mighty man of God gets drunk. slobbering, passed out drunk in his tent. Look what happened in Genesis 9, uh, 21. One day Noah drank some wine. Let me just stop there because I hear some pages turning Genesis 9, 21. This might be a little different translation, but you can find it. Genesis 9, 21. But let me, let me just say this. The Bible says don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Do you love me because I tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear? Amen? It's the truth. It's the truth. Now, God loves us no matter what we're dealing with, and nothing can separate you from the love of God. And there's people that, 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 that go through all kinds of things. But we are to aspire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What does that alcohol give you that God can't? All the alcohol is is a band-aid. You say, well, we like to get together and have a little fun. Well, you can have fun with the church. Because I don't need no alcohol to have fun. What kind of fun are you looking to get away from your troubles? Just relax. You can relax by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues 20 minutes will do more than what any alcohol will ever do. Because you come out of praying in the Spirit, you'll be like, me strong. And the devil's like, yikes, get out of here. Amen? You'll be like, all that stuff comes here comes right out of the inside of you. That's why Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. So we don't, we, there's, a, there's a, don't go the cheap imitation way. Go the, 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 the powerful way. Amen. Amen? Now, I'm not going to be outside your house at night peeking in your window and seeing what you're doing. <laughs> because you're, you work out your own salvation. Amen? Between you and your Lord, I'm just accountable to say what the Lord told me to say. And I'm not going to look down on you either. And I'm not going to talk about you if someone tells me something. In fact, if you want to be on point, when someone brings you stuff that you don't need to be hearing, if you're not a part of the problem or solution to the problem, just tell them, I'm nobody's garbage can. Stop dumping your garbage in me. They won't come to you anymore. Some people say, I don't know what to do. They always come to me and they tell me all this stuff. And tell them you're not their garbage can. They won't be back. Problem solved. Would you want someone telling everybody about your past, what you've done? It's very hurtful. Very hurtful when you... Sometimes things get said in the church, but what people don't remember is that it always comes back to me. And all it does is hurt my heart. And I'm not out to kick anybody out of the church because I love you. And I'm going to be here doing what God called me to do until he moves me out of the way or moves me on or something like that. But, but, but I love you. I'm, not, I'm never giving up on you, ever. 
But I'll just tell you, it's hurtful. And I'm not talking about me particularly. I'm talking about this church. This church. Why on earth would you ever want to pick a fight with your church? Why? It just doesn't make any sense to me. This is holy ground. This is a holy place. Holy means we're not perfect. It means, it means we're separated unto God to give him glory. Paul said, it's not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So now, you should have found your place by now. <laughs> Genesis 9.21. One day, Noah drank some wine. And he became drunk and lay inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked. And he went outside and told his brothers. What did he do? He exposed him. He literally went out and told the whole world, because that was the whole world at that time. Never mind, you'll get that later. He went outside. Guess what? Dad's in there, naked and I mean, he just was out there just blabbering his business all over the place. But the other two brothers had more honor and more integrity. Look at this. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over their shoulders, and backed into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way so that they would not see him naked. Love covers with silence. Remember that. They covered them, didn't they? They took that robe and they backed up like this. And they, they covered him. They wouldn't, even, they wouldn't even look at their father's nakedness. They covered him with silence. We're to have that same heart. Why would the why would the Holy Spirit record that in the scriptures if we're not to, to get something from it, to learn from it? And look at verse 24. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned what Ham, his youngest son, had done. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. May Canaan be cursed. May he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. So Ham exposed his father's nakedness and Shem and Japheth uh, covered him with silence. Don't be the one that, you know what nakedness is to us? You're not going to see too many people out there streaking somewhere. And, and, and your, nakedness means their vulnerability, their weakness, their addictions, their youthful loss that gets them in crazy predicaments. Sometimes people forget how they were when they were that age. All right, I'm stopping on that one. But these, these, these exposing and, and telling people and, and just revealing these things, that's not love. Love covers with silence. That's what God asked us to do. And then I'm going to close with this. Don't turn there, but you can read it later in James chapter 3, 2 through 12. He, he tells us that, that the, about the power of the tongue. How many know the tongue is powerful? You could be six foot four and full of muscle, and, ha and your tongue is no more powerful than someone that's, that's five foot and 85 pounds. Doesn't matter how big you are, how old you are. If you've got a tongue, you've got a weapon. And the Bible says that your tongue is like a little spark, but it can set the whole forest on fire. It says this in James 3, 12, 2 through 12. And it also says this, that, that, um, that your tongue, the words that you say, can affect your whole life, can affect everything about your life. And one last thing he says in there is no man can tame the tongue. But don't lose, don't lose hope. No natural man. But you're not a natural man. You're a spiritual man or spiritual woman. The Holy Spirit within you contain the tongue. And you've already operated in that, I'm sure. Right? You've already operated in that power. Let the Holy Spirit continue to tame your tongue. Don't get involved in the office gossip. 
you work for your employer as if you're working for the Lord, and your promotion will come from the Lord. Amen? And so remember, faith and love, they are connected. They're very, very, very much connected. And you can love people by what you don't say as much as sometimes by what you do say. Sometimes we just need to cover people. Amen. Now, if you are an integrate part of this person's life and you are part of the solution and you are part of the, the working it out or things like that and you love and care, then, then, you need to, then you need to talk a little bit more. But if you don't have nothing in it, why do I need to know about your neighbor's kid? Why do I need to know about so-and-so, what they've done? I don't need to know that. And you don't either. Why? Faith works by love. And Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to love other people as I have loved you. One last thing. When Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was led to the cross as a lamb ready to be slaughtered, yet he opened not his mouth. You know who he was keeping quiet about? Us. Our sin our failures, our weakness. He took it all for us and he never said a word. The only words he said when he got on that cross was, Father, forgive them. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said a few other words. You know why God forsook him? Because God cannot look on sin. And he who knew no sin became sin so that we could be children of God. The world likes to make the heart symbol for love. But you know what the true symbol of love is? It's the cross. That's all I have. Would you rise, please? Thank you for coming out this morning. Stay dry. <laughs> and uh, um, prayer ministers are coming up. If anyone in here needs prayer of any sort, come on in here. Come on up and, and uh, um, they will pray for you. Um, tonight, our power, if you can make it, come on back out. And uh, uh, it's just, it's an hour. To me, it's the best hour of the week. And uh, if you'd like to sing, if you haven't, if you'd like to sing or um, you can come and you're welcome to sing a special. And then we'll hit the word home and then we'll be good to go. Let's, let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this, uh, time that we had this morning. I thank you, Lord, that, that our desire is to not only love you more, but to love one another. And I thank you, Lord God, that, that we'll put a watch over our mouth and a guard over our heart, Lord, and may we, may we choose our words wisely. May we choose to forgive and choose to walk in love, even if we don't feel like it. May we just do it by the power of God and by the power of the word. And Lord, I pray that every person in here, I pray that you keep them safe and happy and healthy. I pray for their children to be successful in every way. And I pray that their children, and, and thank you that their children are taught of the Lord. And so when they're old, they'll not depart to faith, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.